Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, the patch notes for the new patch literally just came out on the um, official Monster Super League Facebook page. It came out 25 minutes ago. And we're going to be taking a look at all the new um, all the new things that they're going to be introducing in this patch. Now, there's this is a, the official note. Like, this is not a developer's note. This is like the official patch notes of what's going to be changing. So I'm going to be going through everything and I'll kind of tell you guys what to expect. Um, what I think is to be expected from these changes. Now the first thing is there's going to be two Nat 5s. This is Sun Wukong and Sun Zhang from you know Journey to the West. It is pretty much mandatory to always have a Wukong in like if you're an Asian game designer you need to have you need to fit Wukong into your game somehow. Um, but anyways like I think it's for for Monster Super League it's not too weird because they always have like some sort of legend person from legend um, as their Nat 5 you know so it's yeah, that's that's actually pretty normal. Now, Sun Zong is like the monk from Journey to the West. You know, Wu Kong's a uh, master, and he he's gonna be the a new supporter type um, Nat Five. So he might actually be a healer. He might be the first Nat Five healer. That'll actually be pretty cool. Um, so and the thing is, you can only get this guy during the Heroes Festival. So he's gonna be like the Balrona. So basically, no one's gonna have him. Now the event, uh, the event for the Heroes Festival is going to last two days, from the 30th uh, to May 2nd. And um, if you guys don't know what the Heroes Festival is, it's basically you get an increased chance to summon Nat Fives during that time. And if you summon a Nat Five during that time, you get another another um, Nat Five for free, basically. But they're limiting the amount of Nat Fives you can summon to one per account. I think this is actually pretty fair. Um, I think in the last one they didn't limit it and people had like a, a shit ton of Nat 5s. Now this might disappoint some people, but in the long run I don't think it matters because if you're, if you're always summoning during every single Heroes Festival then um, then it doesn't really matter because you're not going to always... Actually no, like if you if you at least summon at one Nat 5 per Heroes Festival it's worth it, but then um, you can't just like hoard a lot of gems and just always summon like during the Heroes Festival, but they're, now they're having Heroes Festival twice a month. So if you're like if you're summoning during those two times, you'll be bound to at least get like one Nat 5 during one of those times, which will kind of be worth it anyways. Um, you basically you summon until you get a Nat 5 and then you just stop and you wait for the next Heroes Festival. So I think this is healthier for the game, to be honest. Like I, I really do think this is healthier. Um, some people might not agree with me, but I, I think this is... Uh, you know, in terms of game design, this is much, much better. Like, for, for the longevity of the game. If they're planning to have Heroes Festival every single month, this is actually pretty good. Now, uh, shit. Misclick. There, there's gonna be an, uh... Oh yeah, they're gonna have Odin after the Heroes Festival, which isn't really important. And, uh... After Heroes Festival, someone will call Summon Chance. Will be increased in the Special Shop. And you can get Balrona and Sunzong during Heroes Festival only. So you can still get a Balrona now, but now you can also get Sunzong, which is, I guess it's all right, but it's it's going to be really really hard to evil three those monsters if you can only get them during Hero Heroes Festival. Um, you can check the limited Astromon. All right, that's that's actually pretty good. This actually eliminates a lot of confusion um, for people. Now. There is also going to be a rebirth um, part of the Heroes Festival as well. Um, actually, no. This is actually about the Heroes package, not about the rebirth. Um, the Heroes package is basically what I expected as well. It's basically a package that you can buy that um, gives you gives you a ticket that allows you to do one ten plus one, and it's basically at a discounted price. So it's cheaper than buying Astrogems. So people that like maybe spend a little bit on the game. Um, depending on how this is priced, like people that like aren't necessarily whales, but like you know spend a little little bit of money here and there, um, this might actually be worth it during during the Heroes Festival to buy this ticket and just maybe like do it once and see if you you get anything if it's cheap, if it's uh, if it's not too expensive. Now there's also going to be a Rebirth Festival. This is for the Thor. Uh, this is basically exactly the same as the last Heroes Festival um, or last Rebirth Festival. 
So you basically use four stars to rebirth. Three four stars equals one Thor. And there's a chance for light and dark Thor as well. And um, when you rebirth, it used to be when you rebirth 15 times, it gives you 600 astrogens back. But now it, they changed it to five times, but you only get 300 astrogens, which is still an increase because you get, um, you get 900 in total if you do 15. Now, um, please astro please refer to Heroes Festival notice. All right, uh, balance and adjustments. Some astromons will be balanced. So, I don't think they have. They might not have all the news of of the balancing in their images, but I'll, I'll take a look at that later if they actually do have it. But we already know that the Shiva and Nightmare, at the very least, are going to be balanced. So maybe some other monsters are going to be balanced as well. Um, the Golem's dungeon difficulty and reward for each floor will be adjusted. Um, gol so yeah, we basically, this is what we've been hearing about for a long time. And uh, Golem's dungeon, everything will be changed. Um, I'll go over the, dunge the Golem dungeon thing when I get to the images. But if you, I think they're adding some new rewards. So there's actually something really, really, uh, Tower of Chaos difficulty of each floor will be adjusted. It's actually pretty interesting. If they're going to make it harder. They make it harder, they better make the rewards better as well. Um, new random matching system for an additional reward for champion at Astromon League. So this is actually really good. This actually adds incentive for people to PvP. Because now if you get if you get to champions, you actually get a Holy Gleam every single week. So that's actually really, really nice. If you're like really competitive, you can actually progress a lot faster than everyone else if you're focused, really, really focused and really serious on doing PvP. Um, after choosing a random opponent, the, uh, oh wait, wait, wait. Um, now after Diamond Tier, the matching system is going to be random, so you can't see what enemies that, what um, you can't use like element advantage or anything like that, which I guess is good for me because I basically just run a a dark team and that's it. Uh, it's going to be really interesting because this actually adds a lot of chances for for defenses to win. Like you might be able to add some cheesy defense that. Um, you know, un under normal circumstances, probably don't work, but in this case, it might. It, it might because they might be surprised. Like you might have like a whole bunch of, um, you know, some like attack monsters or something like that, and they're not going to expect it. And then they maybe they bring tanks, and then they're like, "Holy shit! I can't! I just got one shotted by by his guy, or something like that." Or maybe they're bringing like all dark attackers, and then you, you're running like. I don't know, a bunch of light, like all light or something like that, and then they're like, holy shit, I shouldn't have done that. Um, anyways, it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, I'm really excited because I, I do really enjoy PvP in this game. Now, this might actually... I think there's a, there's a healthy as aspect and, and also an unhealthy aspect to this because the, the healthy thing is like, Defenses now actually have a chance to win. Like there's a lot of more, there's a lot more strategy you can do for defense now. Now that um, matching is random after diamond tier, but the the uh, the bad thing about this is people on offense. Like if you're one of those, you know, you raise a lot of different elements, you gemmed up a lot of monsters, and you like to use like strategy and ele elemental advantage against the enemy um, when you're going into offense. You can kind of no longer do that. So. It's kind of unfortunate, um, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I kind of like it. I I, I I prefer this, but I, I do understand that not everyone will like will like this new change. But the holy gleam thing is definitely an improvement. Like holy shit, I'm going, I'm going to be champion this week. All right, or no, next week. I'm going to be champion next week. I'm going to go go super hard. Battle results, uh, window, UI scenario and. Astromon League will be improved. I don't even know if I can make it though. Gotta get that Evil 3 Water Persephone. I might be able to make it. I also gotta set up some really cheesy defense. I have so many ideas going through my head right now. Now, now that I just uh, I just read that. Um, the Dark Pinello event is going to be ending. And this is basically everything that's talking about the golems. So I'm going to talk about the golem changes here. Um, using their images. Now, the 
the changes are actually pretty simple. It's like the, the elements are going to be changed. Uh, B1, nobody really farms B1 to B4 or B5 at all. So um, I think most people are going to be starting out at, on B6. If you're like, because you can just get four star gems from, from the normal maps. So you don't really need to come here and you don't need, really need to do the lower um, golem floors really at all. And you can basically level monsters while while farming gems. So there really is no reason to farm like B one through one through four. Um, it actually depends. Like maybe they they increase the drop rate of cer certain things. But especially now, since um, gems only drop four stars at the at max, there really is no reason for you to farm B four at all. Basically, everyone's going to start at B five. And they're gonna be farming. Um, yeah, B5 basically has all the shapes. So B5 gives you three to three to five star gems. Um, maybe they start at B5. Possibly they could skip to B6 if B6 is easy enough. Then B6 has three to six star gems. So you actually have a chance to get six star gems. And B7 to 10 basically still drops the same exact gems as before. The only difference is the elements are changing. Now. For most people that are farming um, in the mid game, they're probably at the stage of B7, which their B7 is water, and they're mostly using a wood team because wood has element advantage against water. This is no longer the case, so um, it's going to get changed to wood. So all the important monsters now, I think, uh, that people want to aim for, like the first monsters that they want to raise, like for new players, are going to be fire element instead of wood. Actually, it depends because there's a possibility that B8 and B9 is going to be like the B, B8, B9 situation that we have right now where B, B9 is actually easier than B8. Um, but I really don't see that happening because now we can use elemental advantage. It really depends on the, the skills of the bosses. So they actually re announced the skills of the bosses. So we can take a look at that as well because basically B7, 8, and 9, they're supposed to be just as hard as each other. Like... In terms of difficulty, in terms of like monster, um, the balancing of the monsters, the bosses, the, the the minions, and everything, they're supposed to be on the same difficulty level. So there is a possibility of newer players if they raise mostly wood teams, they could use like um, a friend's reps and refill through like B7 and B8, and then skip straight to B9 and start farming using their wood team against the water boss for triangle gems. There is that possibility, um, but it depends on the on the actual skills of the boss and the skills of the minions uh, of that stage. Now, golem resistance uh, to thirst and taunt will disappear. So basically, golems are going to be no longer immune to thirst and taunt. This is pretty big because it opens up a few strategies that you can use against the golem boss. It is actually pretty good. And golem resist status will drop to up to 50%. So whatever it is now, it will drop by additional 50% if I'm reading this right, which is a huge increase, meaning that debuffs are going to be really, really huge for golems. So you can actually sat through a lot of the golems, which is also really good for newer players if they want to just skip through, if they want to um, effectively clear through the dungeons like early on, they might, you know, use saps and stuff, and it will be a, an effective strategy against the golem. Um, Golem HP will increase up to 25% from B6 to B8. Now, this is basically to counter the the whole resist change because since the golem is now um, now has lower resistance, it's much much easier to armor break him, so you can actually kill him faster. So, I think the resist change is pretty big. It's actually bigger than the HP change, so it doesn't really matter that his HP increases. You can basically um, armor break him and still do like even more damage to them. Now this is also really big for people that want to use saps because sap does HP percent damage to enemies. So with more HP your saps are going to be doing more damage and less resistance means you land more saps. So saps going to be an effective strategy against the golem. Another thing is um, if you if you guys have any like uh, you know monsters that have courageous strike or HP leverage the B10 boss actually already has a lot of HP. So with this 25% increase, the monsters with HP leverage actually does um, a significant amount of damage against the boss. So monsters like Dark Thor and stuff are probably going to be pretty good. I don't know what monsters have HP leverage. I, I, I really don't. 
I think like what Siegfried or something has it. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, and then the gem drop rate of B1, 7, 8, 9, 10 will remain the same, which is good news because they better not nerf that. Now, this is the skills of all the golems. Um, we're going to skip through... Yeah, we're just going to skip through to, to B6. Like, there really is no point farming B1 to 5. Maybe B5. Alright, we'll take a look at B5 really, really quick. Defense down, buff breaker. Um, the guardians on, on, on the right. So this, these guys have defense down, buff breaker as well. Basically just uh, increases more threat. Oh, no adjustment, but then buff breaker becomes thirst, which is actually really annoying because thirst can can mess up your healers. Um, now, for B6, they, they put blind and attack down. So I guess they're trying to make it so you can't farm B6 as fast because if they land blind and attack down, then you can't do as much damage. They also have buff breaker, which counters shields if you try to block out their um, their things with, with a shield. They can use... Oh wait, no. Buff breaker doesn't break shields, right? You need shield breaker for, for breaking shield. So I guess it doesn't really matter. You can probably still use shield for this. And um, it also has attack up for the boss. So basically they're trying to make a B6 like a just a regular tank and spank, really. Just try to try to um, get strong enough monsters to clear through it. Now B7 is wood. Um, it turned into Petrify and Taunt, Fatigue and Shield. So I guess Shield's more annoying if you want to use a Sapper Comp against this, but I guess Shields are definitely still breakable. Um, you could use like a Shield Breaker plus... Are there any Fire Shield Breakers? I don't, I don't really know. I, I don't know too much about it. Um, might not really be worth doing. You might just want to have enough damage to, with fire units to be able to, to clear through this. Since they have, um, golems have lower resist, just basically armor breaking him and then doing lots of damage will be able to kill him. So I think this, this boss is just going to be really annoying. He's not going to be really threatening because he just has petrify and taunt and these are not really any high threat skills. Same thing with fatigue. It basically um, just makes the whole fight really annoying. Actually, no, these are the gar Guardian skills. They do have the Golem skills, right, as well? No, they don't have the Golem skills. That is unfortunate. Um, but we can kind of uh, kind of predict what the fight's going to be like. Because basically, what the what this stage is trying to do is trying to stall the fight. Because since this one has Petrify, you it, it'll Petrify you and basically waste a turn. And then this one likes to Taunt which also likes to waste a turn because you will have to spend a turn attacking it. It probably has a lot of HP, so it's going to be quite annoying. Um, reduce stunned enemy defenses for two turns. Oh no, oh no that was, that's the old one. It turned into attack down two turns and petrify. Shield breaker defense up. Now, it's a fire boss. There's a possibility that the boss either has some sort of really threatening debuff since they're designing it like this. Because um, they, they have Shield Breaker and a lot of really annoying, um, like a s really stally debuffs as well. The, it, 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 there is a possibility that the B8 boss might be a Sapper boss. It actually makes a lot of sense if this boss is a, is a Sapper boss. Because if you think about it, both his minions um, basically prolong the fight. And it does an even better job than the B7 boss. Because attack down is more annoying than, than anything. Like it basically just decreases your damage. And then um, Petrify makes it so you you basically waste a turn. Shield Breaker makes it so you can't use shields to counter the boss. So if he has like some some sort of sap or a really annoying debuff, you can't really use shields to counter that. And then Defense Up makes him really tanky, so it's to counter you armor breaking him and trying to um, get him low. So there, it actually might be an effective strategy to use Sapper against this boss. And there's a lot of really good water sappers like um, Water Sea Star, Water Miho, Water Yuki. Um, there's some like sapper healers as well, Water Hana. So it might be a really effective strategy to be, be sapping against this boss, um, since he really has no other skill to to, um, to 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 fight against your saps. I think that's probably the way the devs are designing it. Now the B9 boss has taunt and blind, or the minions have taunt and blind. Um, sap and recovery up. Let me think about this. 
Oh, the boss might be like a healer boss. These minions are really annoying. They basically just keep prolonging the fight. They make the fight longer. So... They just make... make um, they don't really have any threat, which is really good. Because if you're a newer player move, going into this content, it's much, much better that these minions have like attack down, petrify, taunt, and blind versus like defense break and shock and stuff like that. You, you really don't want, want to have that because there's a chance of you dying really quick. Now, I think this is more really just like um, kind of like a tanking damage test just to kind of test out the quality of your gems, really. Just try to see if you can you can uh, clear through this. So I think I think by design this boss is going to be able to heal because it has recovery up. So it's just going to be like um, probably a DPS test. I think that's what B9 will probably be about, ju judging from the minion skills. Um, now B10 really has no doesn't have a lot of change. Um, it basically has defense down, attack down, which is just two really annoying debuffs. And defense down is kind of the only debuff that actually has some sort of threat. So B10 is actually going to be a lot harder than B7 to 9. Um, and then they also have Thirst, which is actually pretty scary because Thirst makes it so... Um, Thirst makes it so you might not be able to have your heal up because basically if they land Thirst on your healer, it kind of counts as a silence. Because every single turn, your your healer isn't going to have his bar up to full. So that's going to be really annoying. Now, they changed the shield to Purification, which um, I guess is trying to... They're trying to slow down the fight, but it should be still be pretty easy to... Uh, to... to counter this. Because as long as... If you have, like, two Armor Breakers or something in your team, you should still, still be able to keep Armor Break on the boss for the majority of the, the fight. So it shouldn't be too bad. And it, it, it is on a 5-star skill, not on, not on any um, other skill. Actually, all buffs are on 5-star skills. So it's a 5-star skill, so he's not going to be able to do it every single turn. So you don't have to really worry too much about your buffs being cleansed. I would rather it have Purification than Shield, to be honest. Because Shield just basically makes the fight even longer. He actually can, can tank damage with a Shield. But Purification, um, you know, if you have another Armor Breaker, it really doesn't doesn't matter too much. So I think that is pretty much it. Now the um, difficulty of uh, of the Starstone dungeons are, or the special element dungeons are going to be changed a little bit. So boss level is going to be lowered basically on all these and Astromon level is going to be lowered on all these as well. So it's going to be much much easier for newer players to be farming high star stones to 6 star their monsters. Because I remember when I was, when I just started out, it was it was it was just hell. It was just pure hell trying to farm my first ever six star. Um, so now it's going to be a little bit easier. I think the game is definitely going to be a lot easier for newer players to to get into and progress um, and catch up. Really, I th I think they it definitely need, does need that because we have all these players like that are really really far ahead. It's really hard for new players to to come and catch up if they really want to try hard and be competitive in this game so yeah this will be pretty good um tower of chaos is also going to be changed hp defense of dark lyrith will slightly drop not important floor 50 um floor 50 is actually pretty big because the boss is actually just a he's he really is just a damage test it really is just a tank and spank for floor floor 50 um you just got to be able to tank enough damage do enough damage and floor 60 is not important either. So um, <laughs> I guess the only significant change is to floor 50. It just makes clearing floor 50 a little bit easier. So I guess um, newer players will be able to effectively clear to floor 50, maybe during their first month, as long as they didn't join at like the end of the month. If they join at the beginning of the month, they should be able to progress till to floor 50 um, within the first month. So that's actually pretty good too. Now, that is pretty much it for the changes. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't see the actual skills to the golems. We will have to wait for the update for that. So, um, yeah, just stay tuned for when I actually do take a look at the update. It, it's going to be coming out in about 24 hours or so. So, yeah, we'll see about that. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.